Hello and welcome to the Daily Comic and Collectible, episode 368. Now today, the collectible of the day is the Hasbro Toys, Marvel Legends series, Cree Century Build-A-Figure, Captain Marvel, Nick Fury action figure. In the years following the Cold War, Nick Fury wrestles with a sense of purpose within S.H.I.E.L.D. When Fury crosses paths with Captain Marvel, they become Earth's only hope of stopping a scroll invasion. This six-inch scale figure of Agent Nick Fury is exactly as he appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Captain Marvel, the movie. Highly detailed with intricate deco and a beautifully detailed head sculpt that looks just like actor Samuel L. Jackson, this 112 scale figure comes fully articulated for added posing and play. This is also part of the Cree Sentry Build-A-Figure Wave and comes with an arm accessory, including a handgun and the flurkin in a muzzle and chains, poor kitty, released by Hasbro Toys. Now the comic of the day is Marvel Collector's Items Classics, Volume 1, Issue Number 15, with a cover date of June 1968. This story is a reprint of the first story from Fantastic Four, issue number 21, from December of 1963, only five years after the original. Story by Stan Lee, art by Jack Kirby, and cover by Jack Kirby. This issue is titled, The Hate Monger. We open with the Fantastic Four enjoying some downtime, when suddenly their base begins to shake out of control. Johnny, Reed, and Sue discover the source is the Thing, who's going full strength on his punching bag after reading some news reports regarding the hate monger, a cowled rabble-rouser who's been using hate speech to incite xenophobia among the citizens of New York City. Reed tries to calm Ben down by telling him that bigots usually get what they deserve. Not long after, while the Fantastic Four are out on the town, they come across one of the hate mongers' rallies, where the hate monger works up the crowd into such a frenzy that they attack a man due to his ethnicity. When the thing intervenes to dispense the mob, the hate monger pulls out his hate ray and uses it on the team. The effects are instant, and the Fantastic Four begin to squabble among each other. Pushed by their artificially induced hatred, the Fantastic Four eventually decide to break up, as each member comes to believe that they're better than the others, much to the pleasure of the hate monger. Reed Richards returns to the Baxter building to find that security is fighting with a man in the lobby who's trying to gain access to the Fantastic Four's headquarters. Reed is surprised to find that it's Nick Fury, wartime hero, an agent of the CIA, and a colleague of his military days. After briefly reminiscing of the past, Fury tells of civil unrest and rioting in the South American nation of San Gusto, a country that's important to American interests, and asks the Fantastic Four's help in quelling the violence. Fury is surprised to hear that the Fantastic Four have broken up, and decides to stay behind as Richard goes to San Gusto alone. When the pogo plane lifts off from the Baxter building, it's seen by the Thing, Johnny, and Sue, who decide to go back to their headquarters to see what's going on. There they find Nick Fury, who plays on the trio's jealousy of each other to convince them to go to San Gusto as well. The trio and Fury all leave in the passenger ICBM that is launched from the roof of the Baxter building. Unknown to them all, the hate monger is responsible for their unrest in San Gusto and has since relocated there via subsurface missile. While the hate monger begins preparing weapons for his armies, Reed Richards is doing his best to destroy weapons cached across the country. However, while on the mission, Richards is knocked out by a gas attack and taken prisoner. The hate monger shows his master plan that San Gusto he can utilize a massive hate ray weapon that bounces off the moon to hit a target anywhere on Earth. Before the hate monger can do more 
Nick Fury ambushes them. Caught off guard, the hate monger is forced to give over the antidote for his hate ray. While Fury is busy administering the cure to Reed, their foe and his minions manage to escape. While Reed tracks down his errant teammates and administers the cure for them, Nick Fury follows the hate mongers to pin him and his men down before they could operate their global hate ray. In the ensuing battle, the Invisible Girl uses her powers to get close to the hate monger. When he tries to use his hate ray, Sue ruins his aim, causing the ray to hit his two bodyguards. The guards then turn their weapons on the hate monger, gunning him down. With their enemy dead, Nick Fury unmasks him, and they are all shocked to see that their foe was apparently Adolf Hitler, the former Nazi dictator. With the hate monger destroyed, the Fantastic Four return home. Geek Fact The original of this story was considered a key issue, being the first appearance of the hate monger, who's really Adolf Hitler. Bonus Geek Fact Nick Fury joined the OSS after the bombing of Hiroshima between August 6th and August 9th of 1945. As revealed in Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., Volume 3, Issue Number 38, from August of 1992. He remained in the foreign intelligence when the OSS was later replaced by the CIA. Another bonus geek fact. An explanation was needed to explain why Nick Fury remained youthful, even though he was born in 1910 and was fighting in World War II. Marvel Spotlight, Volume 1, Issue 31, from December of 1976, explained that Fury has been kept vital thanks to injections of the Infinity Formula, which has kept him young since the war. Side Fact The Infinity Formula, also called the Forever Compound, is an alchemical serum produced by the Brotherhood of the Shield. It's a diluted form of the elixir of life, developed by Sir Isaac Newton. In 1652. Bonus side fact. The Brotherhood of the Shield is an ancient organization created to keep the Earth safe. They've recruited the best minds and warriors throughout history. Marvel Masterpiece Pinup. Check out this full page print. But if you look behind the electric pole, it looks like someone has paint on their hands. Literally. That dirty, dirty Doctor Doom. Holy Twisting Tongues, Batman! Become a member of the Merry Marvel Marching Society. Just feast your baby blues on what members get. An all-new membership pin. An official recording of the Merry Marvel Marching Song. Swinging stickers of eight superheroes. A nutty new notepad. A magniloquent Marvel mini-book. A mind-snapping Marvel pencil. A majestic Merry Marvel Marching Certificate. And your own... Munificent membership card, all for one dollar. And final geek fact. This story implies that the real Adolf Hitler might not have been dead and casts questions regarding the identity of hate monger and if he's the real Hitler or not. This is accurate as Hitler used at least one body double during World War II. This idea was first established in All Winners Comics, Volume 1, Issue Number 11, from December of 1943. When the Destroyer attempted to assassinate the real Hitler and found his home full of impersonators, <laughs> I would go on down this rabbit hole and discuss the Hitler clones, but we're out of time for today. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Daily Comic and Collectible. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. This is Cat Fan Comics Man, and I'll catch you on the flip. Over and out.